In this video, we're going to discuss several assumptions of the capital asset pricing model. So just a quick review. Remember that the CAPM formula is this right here, and it's how we calculate the expected return of a security, otherwise known as the cost of capital. So we got the cost of capital equal to the risk-free rate of return plus the beta of the security times the market risk premium, which is the expected return of the market, minus the risk-free rate. So this is CAPM. It's based on several critical assumptions. One of those assumptions is that investors are price takers, and so they buy and sell securities at competitive prices. So we're not assuming that any person, any one person can go and have an influence over the price of a security. They're all price takers, and there are competitive prices. And when investors buy and sell securities, they don't incur any transactions transaction costs or any taxes whatsoever. So we just assume away taxes when we're thinking about the cap M. And we also assume that investors can borrow or lend money at the risk-free rate of interest. Okay, So those are important assumptions, but we also think about the expectations that investors have, and we assume that they're homogeneous. So what that means is that we're assuming that all the investors that are out there that buy or sell securities, that they have access to the same publicly available data. They're all dealing with the same uh, financial information and so forth, the same disclosures that have been made by firms. And so they're going to have similar expectations when it comes to the expected rate of return, the expected volatility, and so forth. So when we think about risk and return, we're assuming that all the investors have the same kind of thought process because they're all dealing with the same publicly available data for these companies. We're not assuming that one investor knows more than another investor and therefore has very different expectations about risk and return for, for a company or an asset. Then we're also going to assume with CAPM that the investors are only going to hold efficient portfolios of securities. And what we mean by efficient is, is that for any given portfolio, you couldn't go and find some other portfolio that has the same risk and yet a higher return, right? So that would be an, in, an inefficient portfolio. Would so, so let me give an example. Let's say we got portfolio A, we got portfolio B, and we look at the volatility for each portfolio. And let's say they each have a volatility of 20%. So they both have the same total risk. And then we look at the return, the expected return, and we see that for portfolio A, the expected return is 25%. And then the expected return for portfolio B is 22%. Now, think about it. Why would anybody hold portfolio B when we know that, look, they have the same risk. Each portfolio has the same risk, and yet portfolio A has a higher return. So when we say that investors only hold efficient portfolios of securities, we're saying that in this case, they would only hold portfolio A because they have the same risk, and yet they would hold the one with the highest return. You, It would be inefficient to hold portfolio B because you would be having the same risk as portfolio A, and yet you would be getting a lower return. So we're gonna assume that the investors are only going to hold efficient portfolios of securities under CAPM.